Okay. Here we go. So we're going to go over the elements that we have decided really make for a strong, for a strong collage. Um, first, I'm going to read the list of words that you guys came up with last class. All right. So we're going to say overlap. And I'm going to look at some examples of this overlap, threshold, frame, long and small, large, scale and hierarchy. I think that's definitely here. There's a sense of scale in these. You guys said weight, depth, planes. Well, here's a really great example of planes right here in the way that it's been diagrammed. This is really good, right? But the planes that make it up are been diagrammed. But the planes are at angles, which give an idea about volume, depth, or back to front. Also important to this is construction lines. So we can go all the way over here. And this shows us the importance of construction lines. As this, as Fleischer Art Memorial starts to get dissected, these construction lines start to show us relationships that we have across the building, not just in the shapes that make it up or the materials that make it up, but also the spaces, the volumes, the kind of space that emanates from it, almost as if it had, had a glow, as if different shapes had a glow. So you guys said that balance is important, but not necessarily symmetry. So here's an example of balance without symmetry. Um, I'm going to add that we discussed today that some attention to detail and leaning into that detail is actually really, really helpful. Um, an understanding of where the horizon is, even though it doesn't need to be visually apparent. So just an understanding of where that horizon is can be really important. Thickness, shadow, and dimension. So I think the kind of overclocking of the shadows and the shapes here is what's really interesting in giving this depth and weight. We talked about trying to stay away from things like faces, icons, and things that are those things no matter what. So if we have a M1 Abrams tank, it's always an M1 Abrams tank. If we have a shoe, it is a shoe, even when it's not a shoe. If we have a running bush with a cone head. That is what it is. And I don't want to, I don't want, I'm not downplaying these mistakes. These are necessary things that we need to do in order to learn why they work or don't work. The worst thing would be to not do it. And then we could not learn the lesson. You guys said also proportion, editing, and order and structure. And we started to talk about the importance of white or blank space allowing our imaginations to fill in the gaps. And we have really good examples of that here. And in all of these cases, we said, what if you did more of it? What if you took out more? What if you did more detail? What if you did more editing? So this is really interesting. In all of the feedback today, what we said was not, don't do that. What we said was, this one is the most interesting. We want more. More iterations, more practice, more, more of what you're doing, more control, more pieces. And that eventually gives, hang on, my wife is talking really loud at the end of the hallway. And we close the door. All right, so everybody in everybody's house is making themselves known today. So the other thing you guys said is a sense of story or the why. All right, let's go over here. And I might ask you guys to draw along with me, but I'm gonna start with the pen tool and I'm gonna to try to draw in a couple different ways. So first of all, a sense of the horizon is really important. Um, oh, I'm not gonna be able to draw as nice as, so here's the decision. Gotta make the decision if I'm gonna draw with Zoom or if I'm gonna draw with this so I can leave it up for you guys. Put in the chat if you think we should draw it in here and it's going to be all squiggly, or if we should draw it with straight lines in the zoom. Or should we do both? Should we do a hybrid of analog and analog, digital and digital? That's what we got to do. That's what we got to do. All right, fine. Here we go. We're going all in. We're doing Zoom and Miro, same time. Challenge accepted. All right, I'm gonna erase that with Zoom. Now I'm gonna have to figure out which drawings are which drawings. 
Oh boy. All right, this is interesting. Okay, so the first thing that we need to have is some kind of general indication of where is the horizon. So I'm gonna put this in as a construction line because construction lines are our friends. All right, that's very important. And the horizon can be a variety of places. It could be high or low. The other thing that's really important is a sense of the frame. And so when I put in a frame, I don't want it to be, I don't want to put this, I don't want it to be like big and heavy and dark. I want it to be large. So I'm going to put in a frame here like this. There we go. And we'll make it a color eventually. But it's just kind of there. It's going to be interesting. OK. Oh, this is cool. I can try it. Yes, I like it. OK. Now, when I talk about white space, what I'm talking about is these spaces here. Like, I kind of don't want to put anything in this area. OK. Now, what I'm drawing might be here, or it might be over here, or it might be over here. Those are super messy. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to approach the edge and like fill everything in all the way to the edge every single time. We saw some examples of that. And the problem is that it fills out the collage completely. It doesn't give us a sense of space. It feels like we're looking through, at best, it feels like we're looking through a window. At worst, we realize that we're looking at a collage that's a piece of paper. So we want to engage the white space. So for those of you taking notes on group me, I'm going to start with you. Yes, you. I'm going to start with you and there you go. Um, we need to, number one, engage the white space. Number two, draw the horizon. Number three, we need to have a sense of the boundaries of the paper. Tag team somebody else when you're done taking those notes and have somebody else step in for you. I spelled your name horribly wrong in the chat. I apologize. So next... Next, we want to make, um, we want to get, if we remember, we were showing these before, which is there's these elements of a three-dimensional space that we need to have. And it's length, width, length, width, and height. The x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. These are really important. Without all of those axes, this just doesn't work. Let me make that, let me make that orange so it shows up a little bit better. Here we go. This is how we understand three-dimensional space. I'm actually going to make a mini diagram of that right over here on this corner. So these are really important. So next person up on Tag Team Notes, please put that down that that's important. You need to have length, width, and height. The horizon line provides depth. There we go. So that's really important to have. Once you have all of those, it's actually essential that you have a hierarchy of them. So I'm just going to draw these a little bit thicker because repeating something makes a, our eye realize that it's intentional. All right. Now, here's an important note to take. Do something once, and it's special. Usually, if it's in the middle, it's important. Do something twice. And we will compare those two things against each other. Do something three times and it's a pattern. And I'm going to start to look if you're doing it again and again. And this is why iteration, repetition, and doing different assemblies is really important. And why construction lines are really valuable. So I've drawn these nice and dark. But what I'm going to do now, so we got the orange line, got the red line. So these are the primary ones. These don't, this doesn't mean that this is actually how it needs to exist in your image. And of course, you could actually have them be at like distended angles from each other. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to a thinner line. And we can actually start to imagine that this might actually be part of a larger system. So I'm going to start drawing more of them. And we start understanding that there's a system that exists here. I'm going to keep on drawing that system. These lines right now are construction lines. They're here for friendly assistance, but they're not actually a part of the drawing. This should start looking and feeling like a perspective, like a two-point perspective. 
And with the height, it should start feeling like other stuff is happening too, right? And by, and I'm, what am I doing? I'm doing what a good designer does, right? I'm giving a hierarchy. I've given a system of identification so I can say the orange ones and you guys know that I'm talking about vertical lines. I talk about the blue one and you guys know I'm talking about depth. I'm talking about the red ones and you know I'm talking about length, which is like the blue ones, but in the other direction. And I have different line weights and I've drawn these lines so I kind of have an idea of what it is. Now, the interesting thing about this, go ahead and take a screenshot of this and put it in the notes and then tag somebody else, is that these lines don't need to be here for me to believe, for our eyes to believe that three-dimensional space exists. So I'm about to erase them. So let me know when that image is in our, in our notes. Engage the white space, define the horizon, find the boundaries of your space, all right, and a new person has been tagged. Okay, take a picture of this and put it up. And now I'm gonna erase this. So I'm gonna erase these lines. I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna leave the horizon line out of this. And we're gonna just move this into the space just a little bit better. Come on over here, buddy, there you go. Okay, interestingly enough, these three axes don't need to overlap on top of each other either for us to start to understand that there's a space. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start drawing first in the blue axes. So from something that's disappearing in the distance over to here, we can start to understand that something has width. We can keep drawing from here to understand that there's more width going on. I can snag something that's red and draw it similarly to the vanishing point, but I actually don't need to draw to the vanishing point. I just need to make it look like it's going to the vanishing point. And I can keep doing that. I can even do it up here and it'll still work. I can connect these two things, although that ought to be orange, shouldn't it? So I connect that with orange. I can make some of these drop up and down. That's not orange, that's pink. Let's draw it with actual orange, orange. There we go. I can start drawing these things. I can start adding stuff. And by adding verticals, all of a sudden, this starts to feel like it has some depth to it. These are diagrammatic lines that you could overlay on a collage. And you can do the diagram and then build the collage. You can build the collage and then build the diagram. Or you can do a little bit of both. Um, elements of repetition can also occur. And if they foreshorten, it works. And if they don't, well, then something else has just happened. Is that a mistake? Well, not necessarily. Let's put a line here. Actually, that line should be blue, right? I run out of white space. I'm getting too close to the edge. Uh, and then I need orange. Oh man, it's starting to become stuff. Now, I'm doing this from zero. But you guys are doing this with your collaged spaces. So you can do them and start to give them them. Do you guys start to see how there's a three-dimensional feeling that is here? So take a picture of this one and put it in the notes. There's a couple more things that we need to do. I'm going to just use black and I'm going to use a heavier line weight. So there's a space here. There is a space here. There is a space here. There is a space here. There's the notion of some kind of space here. Let me lighten up my construction lines a little bit and let's do it a little bit thinner. There's density of stuff here. There's a lot of stuff here. Now, this could be in the upper left-hand side of your image. It could be in the lower, lower right. It seems like I've got a lot of information, mostly in the lower right of the screen. You guys see how there's a lot of stuff kind of collecting over there? Awesome. Now, let's just put some construction lines on this. I'm gonna use Brilliant Green. So let's look at some of the axes that are lining up. So if you look at just the axes of these pieces by putting crossing lines across them, it'll look one way. But if you start to draw through the center points, so let me just put a stamp on these center points here, 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 and here. Let's start drawing some construction lines. Construction lines can be the edges of things. They can be the boundaries of things. 
So we could draw construction lines like this, and then it starts to feel connected. Actually, I think I'm going to draw them in black. I think it's going to show up easier. So right, if I draw these, it starts to feel like a three-dimensional figure. But watch this. See how these two center lines line up? The thing that I like about construction lines, I try to make them go as far out into the page as possible. Look at how these ones line up. Look at how these ones vertically line up. There's an angle here that kind of bisects them here and here. That's weird. Oh, there's like something going on over there. These guys seem to be in the same plane. These guys seem to be in the same plane. Let's put some more construction lines together. These guys seem to be in the same plane across here. You can't draw enough lines. You can't. So let's just put a ridiculous amount of construction lines on here right now. Anything that got drawn, let's just imagine that we put an extra light line down to just kind of see, OK, what lines up? These line up, these line up, stuff in here lines up, this kind of lines up, these guys line up, these line up. Do you guys see how I'm, I'm playing kind of fast and loose here? But I'm just trying to diagram because I'm looking for scale, proportion, structure. This could be a one-point perspective. This could be a two-point perspective. Now I'm going to try to freehand draw some thicker lines in here. OK, let's say that we have a space that's here. And you've cut away some stuff from that space. And then you've added in some kind of a piece that goes here. Maybe there's some layers horizontally. Doesn't mean that it's a floor or a staircase, it just means that it's some horizontal layers. Maybe there's some another element of repetition, kind of like we saw over here before. Uh, it seems like there's kind of a flat, we were talking about the fact that you need to cut out trapezoidal shapes. And those trapezoidal shapes kind of feel like they have depth to them. So I'm just going to draw this a little bit darker. Ah, and now we start to have these platforms. All right, now I'm going to draw really dark in violet. So if you guys can see what we have here, we have length, width, and depth. We're engaging the white space. I'm going to show you how we're doing that. We have construction lines. What we are creating, I call this kind of a centroid. Um, it's kind of like an asteroid of stuff. So as I draw this here, guys, can you kind of see how like there's a center mass of the things. And it's like it's like where everything starts overlapping multiple times. If you were making this collage by hand, the centroid is kind of the spot where everything where something overlaps and it's not just one piece of paper thick. In general, it kind of looks something like this. I'm going to draw it over here on our it looks like some kind of weird amoeba. But the amoeba usually has some kind of wings to it. Like the amoeba has like this kind of weird diamondy shape to it if it's a one point perspective like that blue line that I'm drawing, or like the green line that I'm drawing, it kind of does something like this. Like the green line, it get, that gives us the sense of, you know, three dimensionality. So it might be for a building that's three dimensional, it might look like this. Now, this is the part where if a student comes in right now, they're like, what the heck is this professor drawing this plate of spaghetti? But the other thing I want to point out is, so, when I first drew this, we were going almost all the way to the edge of the paper. When you're done in Photoshop, if you shrink it by about 15%, you automatically buy in all the white space that you didn't have before. So let me just zoom in on the screen. And because I'm, my Zoom and my Miro are different, can you guys see how that centroid gets bigger? And it actually has a relationship. And if I make it smaller, it still has a relationship to what's going on in there. Now, just what I want you guys to do is imagine that around this space where I'm going to put the light blue, imagine this is all white space. So all of this needs to be the white space so that it can float. And you need some white space on the interior. And you need some white space in here. The last thing that it needs to have is it needs to be stitched to the surface. So it needs to have legs or arms that pull out and grab onto things. I'm going to draw those in orange. So there's things, there's lines that extend. And you guys had a lot of this. Like sometimes it's a line that you draw. Sometimes it's an element that reaches out. But you need to have elements that are planes. 
and elements that are just lines because those start to give axes and all of those other different pieces. Whether you're working in Photoshop or you're working analog or you work analog and then you digitize it and bring it into Photoshop, draw some construction lines on it, put some trace paper over it, scan that trace paper, make it transparent. But for Tuesday, we're gonna rework based on the four that you guys did this time, Doing four, you guys actually did a lot better than focusing and only doing two. So even though it felt like there was a lot more work to do, you guys really dug in and learned a lot more. What I want you to do is I want you to pick, you know, pick two. We're going to stay 50% analog, 50% hybrid. But now I want you to, to, you know, let one be a little bit more analog, but with a little bit of digital. And let one be digital, but with a little bit of analog, mostly digital, but with a little bit of, of um, and you can do that however you want whether it's with a pencil, whether it's with cutting stuff out, rearranging your accoutrements, whatever it is that you wanna do. But what you want to have identified, length, width, and depth, an idea of where the horizon is, where the boundaries are, axes, primary, secondary, tertiary systems, structure, proportion, planes, pieces that reach, and then engage the white space. The benefit of Photoshop is at any time, any time that you feel like you need more space, all you have to do is zoom out and it's there. I have no idea how I'm gonna get this onto the Miro. Maybe I can do a screenshot and then I can put this on the Miro. It's not as beautiful when I draw it by hand, but I will put that up there as well. Uh, okay, and we'll take it from there. I'm gonna stop the recording now. And so you guys can ask questions and recording, recording, recording is stop recording. Stop, recording. stop share. Move chat.